But DeBrusque puts pressure out on Burns. He'll get the puck to Posternock, and Posternock is cleaned nicely by Slavin. Textbook defense. Rebound comes out, though, as Posternock gets to it. Save made by Martin. Now that Canes will spring Martin in on Olmark, he scores! Jordan Martin puts it through Olmark. And with 2.27. Welcome to the Canes Corner Podcast. I am Adam Gold. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us as the Hurricanes put the finishing touches on a 3-2 over the Bruins in Boston. And that was fun. Uh, First of all, we're brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it is for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. No place like, excuse me, Sammy Hanna's crew do a great job and invite you to go there if you have any exterior home improvement. All right, that out of the way. Oh, look, I value them, and you should too. This was a great hockey game. Like I know when if if Carolina loses, we don't want to like say, man, that was a great hockey game. But that was a heck of a game tonight. Carolina played very, very well. And Boston, my money, right? Best team in the league. Best team in the league. You took it to them in Boston for 40 minutes. And then Boston, they ain't going to take it. They're not going to just lie, lay down. They were coming back. You knew they were coming. And they got the first one 90 seconds in. And then Marchand scores again about five and a half minutes later. And you're thinking, oh, no, all of that for nothing. But the rest of the game wasn't one sided. Carolina had some chances. Boston had some chances. Both goalies were making plays. The heck of a hockey game. We have played, there have been plenty of games, especially over the last, say, month, where I'm sitting there going, we're not growing the game tonight. We're not building a fan base. Could be winning a game, but it, it almost seemed like the game against Detroit, well, Carolina was better than Detroit, but it just didn't get a ton out of all of their puck possession, right? I thought there were chances tonight. Carolina could have scored a bunch. Jarvis hit the post. Burns hit the post. They had chances to score. Heck, Martin looked to stall the game's first shift. Jordan just missed the puck. There were opportunities there tonight. Two great teams, two great defensive teams. So I'm not surprised the score was 3-2. Carolina's special teams was dynamite. Man, it was just fun. And it makes it more fun when out on the good end. Three, two. All right. So we got a bunch of things that I want to get to. Uh, and I know we'll go through some of the comments here as well. And we are on YouTube. Invite you to subscribe or like, caress whatever buttons need to be caressed. Follow us if you're like, and if you're here now, I don't have to tell you to follow us uh, wherever you get your podcast because you're listening to this. Uh, but just in case you miss another live on YouTube, by all means, terrestrial podcasts, whatever that means. Is that even a phrase? Uh, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google Play. Are there others? Anyway, uh, wherever you get your podcast, it's Corner Podcast. Give us a rating and review. What is fun? Um, all right. So let's start with the biggest story of the night. And the biggest story of the night is Spencer Martin. We don't need to, we don't need to worry about where you were drafted, who you were drafted by, where you come from. All of that stuff is immaterial to this. About a week ago, he was waived by one of the worst teams in the league. Now that doesn't mean they wanted to get rid of him. He wasn't having a great year. They probably thought he would slip through waivers and they could send him to the minor leagues. The Hurricanes, however, with only Yanni Peretz, other than Antti Ranta, healthy, were in debt 
desperate need of some something that resembled an NHL goalie. This is no disrespect to Yanni Perez, who I said it when he first came up, he was never meant to play. They didn't want him to play. Hey, he did get in the game against the LA Kings on Justin Williams Day. He played about 10 minutes, faced one shot, made a great save. But ultimately, he needs to go play somewhere on a regular basis. So they said, ultimately, they were looking for a way to send him back to Norfolk. So they drag. Do you remember the Seinfeld episode where Costanza eats a, uh, what was it, a, like an eclair? He, like, it's sitting there on a napkin. It looks good to him. Uh, he picks it out of the garbage and takes a bite out of it and gets caught, of course, because it's Costanza. So Spencer Martin is the eclair on a napkin sitting on top of the garbage that Carolina reached in and took a bite out of. And you know what? Freaking delicious. Delicious. I just want you to know that I did not plan that analogy. I didn't. Anyway, tell your friends. I'm proud of that. He was great tonight. He wasn't just good. He was great tonight. The goals, Boston's elite, Arshan's elite is going in the Hall of Fame. Stop Pasternak how many times? James Van Riemsdyk could have scored three goals. That was just a great performance. And just, I don't care how you measure it, 26 saves on 28 shots. He was awesome. Carolina throw him into the absolute most difficult possible scenario. New team on the road in Boston against the team with the best home record in the league. Go get him, Cowboy. If I'm, I think this was his, I know it was his 14th appearance, but I don't think, I think he had 11 starts before this. So this would have made 12 starts. Can I just say that a third of Spencer Martin's starts this year have come against the Boston Bruins? Who hates Spencer Martin? But he was great tonight. He was great on the last save, the, the, the highlight we played coming in. Slave and defensive play on Pasternak. It was my favorite play of the entire game. And there was a lot of really good plays tonight. My favorite play of the entire game. Pasternak coming into the offensive zone right about the top of the faceoff circle. Slave and bodies him off the play. That's how you're supposed to play it. He was trying to get around Jacob. Jacob was like, no, nah, we're not doing that. Unfortunately for Carolina, they didn't, Boston did not lose possession. And the puck ultimately comes back to Pasternak. And he rips one. And I don't know if it was going to get inside the uh, the far post, but Martin is there, lockers it away. We go the other way, Aho to Teravon and to Martin. And that was just the thing of beauty. Of all the people, right? Jordan Martin. Absolutely dynamite. But that was just a great play. It had everything. It had the great defensive play. It had the good save. And it had the boom, boom. Martinuk alone on Olmark. And just like Aho tells him all the time, dude, I always go five hole. You should try it. And it worked. It worked for Martinuk. It doesn't always work for Sebastian. Um, I didn't think this was great, Sebastian. Although I will say that uh, that line flipped. Uh, Bunting and Martinuk changed spots. And part of that was because they were going to give Aho the. Uh, the coil, uh, Arshand. Um, and it was the Pasternak line at one point, but then it became the Brad Frederick. Fr Frederick was on it. Um, that's just a, that's just a hard matchup for anybody, and I think that line was a little occupied. But it, uh, while Sebastian, I didn't think was great tonight, I did think that Tavo Teravainen was. Um, I think this is one of the best games that Tavo has played all year. Didn't play a ton. Um, interesting. We'll get to ice time in a minute. 
I think they'll be blown away by some things. Anyway, um, really, this night was about Spencer Martin. By the way, it was mom's night, so all the moms are on the trip. So think about Spencer Martin's mom. She doesn't know anybody. <laughs> she has no clue. The moms have done this before, right? So for the most part, other than a couple of new players, Bunting, uh, Orloff, I mean, all the moms, they probably have a group chat, like a group text, right? Spencer Martin's has been here like six days. Mom's got to get to know everybody. And you know, she's nervous. Hey, look, I'm the father of a goalkeeper in soccer. I know what it's like to sit there and know that, oh gosh, my kid's the last line of defense. And in hockey, they face a lot more shots. Has to be nerve wracking. So she's not, she's got no time, no time for socializing. No, don't pour me a drink. Wait, make it a double, especially after the second Marsh angle. Anyway. Um, just, it occurred to me as they flashed up to the moms, uh, that it had to be difficult on Spencer's mother. Anyway, uh, tremendous performance by Spencer Martin. I said before the game, and I don't want to make this, uh, this whole thing about him because I want to get to some other things and we're never here longer than like 30 minutes. Um, I thought before the game and I thought even, you know, leading up to this part of the pre all-star break schedule that not only was Spencer Martin likely to start either today or tomorrow, but so it would be his first start. So tonight first hurricane start, I thought going in could also be his last. This is no offense to Spencer Martin. Pyotr Kachetkov back at practice in full yesterday, which means that he's about ready to play. So when he comes back, it's going to be Kuchetkov and Ronka as your two goalies. Now, the roster is such where you can keep an extra, you can keep a third goalie on the active roster. And Carolina is under no obligation uh, to, you know, keep Spencer Martin fresh. They could just carry a third goalie, and he's just going to practice, hanging out. Uh, skating with whoever he is to skate before practice or after practice. So Carolina would just have three goalies. And Spencer Martin, I mean, honestly, it's possible he doesn't play again. But the guy we watched tonight should probably play again. I'm not going to lie. The guy we watched tonight is not going to play tomorrow. I assume that will be Ronta. But the guy we watched tonight could play Saturday against Arizona. Why not? So, look, I'm not looking any further down the road than the next potential start. But I thought Spencer Martin was dynamite. I thought his movement was really good. Um, his awareness was really good. I thought when he had the opportunity to, to freeze a puck, melt it down, he did. Uh, when he could locate the puck in traffic, he did. So all of these things that, at times, Carolina's goaltenders have had, a, I think, a hard time with. Locating pucks in traffic that can be frozen for a faceoff. I thought Spencer Martin did a lot of really good things tonight. So, uh, for what it's worth, tip my cap to Spencer Martin. Uh, he was my first star of the game. Uh, now to another Martin or a Martine, if you will, Marty Natchez now goals in all three games since coming back from injury. And remember he had missed five straight games with an upper body injury and he did not score a goal in the eight previous games. You have to go back to the home loss as it turned out to Nashville for the last time before this stretch that Natchez scored a goal. You know, what was interesting or significant about that loss to Nashville. After that game, they waved Antti Ranta and sent him to the minor leagues. Nobody claimed him, by the way. Um, so ultimately, Ranta goes down, plays the two games in the minors before the holiday, comes back, 
after the holiday. Whether or not those two games did anything or not, don't know. But Rocha came back, got through the Montreal game, and then played pretty good. Um, he'll play tomorrow, I'm sure, against the New Jersey Devils. Uh, but Natchez now has three goals and I think four points in the three games since the break. And here's where I'm just going to get into the interesting numbers from the uh, the box score of the game. So the three Hurricanes forwards who led the team in ice time tonight, one can be easily explained. Seth Jarvis led the team with just under 20 minutes of time on ice. Of course, he kills penalty. And he's on the power play. Makes sense. But Natchez, I'm, I'm sorry, Jarvis led the team at ice. Second was Natchez, just under 19 minutes tonight. Natchez is on the power play, but he doesn't kill penalties. The center that had the most time on ice tonight, Jack Jury. What does that tell us? It tells us that Rod Brindamore trusts him. He's not yet part of the penalty kill. Matter of time. He was eight and four in the faceoff circle. He makes smart plays almost all the time. He's not the biggest guy in the world, so he can be bodied. He's going to have to get stronger. But we are watching, I think, a very solid player who understands what the coach wants. And that line was great tonight. It's probably Carolina's best line start to finish in the game. Drury, Mason, and Natchez. Really, really good tonight. So I just felt like that was uh, that was worth pointing out. So Natchez has a goal, his third straight game with a goal. Drury also had an assist on the Natchez power play goal. Steph Nason, with another great net front presence, gets no point out of it. But you could argue that he was the most critical part other than the goal scorer uh, on the Natchez goal, the power play goal that made it one one nothing in the first period. Uh, so we had Mar Martin Spencer, Martin Natchez, and Martin Ook. Jordan Martin Ook, now five goals in his last six games. Six goals in 2024. He continues, even though that line was on the ice for the second Marshan goal. I don't really fault anybody. What just happened behind me? Uh, my, uh, my Hurricanes flag fell down. I don't fault anybody. Well, that's comedy. I don't fault anybody on the two Marsh angles. I just don't. Uh, sometimes teams and great players simply make great plays. Um, hard work and goal for the first one. Uh, they got Carolina pinned behind their own end. It looked like, you know, the puck was there to be gotten. Carolina just couldn't get to it. Yeah, two teams fight for the puck, and ultimately uh, it falls to Marchand, uh, who roofs it over Martin for the first goal. Second goal was a transition goal where Martin makes the makes the first save. That was uh, the first goal was Aho, Taravan, and Martin. Look, that line was on the ice with Pesci and uh, and Shea. They just couldn't win that battle. The second one in transition, um, maybe the mistake was uh, Jordan Stahl chasing around behind the play because he kind of got knocked away. Uh, and he was behind it, but so was Jarvis. Uh, they all were just on the wrong side of the puck, but again, just sometimes the other team has great players and they make plays. And, and honestly, to me, that was the second goal. But, I thought from that point, while there were some nervous moments, I mean, Carolina had chances to do it, too. They had chances to score, too. So um, I, I wasn't put off by the fact that it was 2-2. We were still watching 
an incredibly entertaining and even hockey game. And Boston was at their best in the third period, but Carolina wasn't bad. And then when Boston took a uh, went to the power play with about six or so minutes to go, Hurricanes got better. They leaned into who they are, and who they are is an elite penalty killing machine. And they killed off their fourth Boston power play. Boston had a couple of chances on it. It's going to happen. You're not going to completely shut shut them off entirely. They're going to have chances. Your goaltender needs to make a save or two, and Spencer Martin did. Penalty kill four for four, power play, two goals. What do you say? Dynamite, dynamite play all the way around. Um, so. Art Nook was great. Special teams were great. The goaltending was great. Uh, just a couple of like numbers from the game. Sebastian Ajo had a couple of assists tonight. Again, I didn't think it was a great Sebastian Ajo performance tonight. Wasn't bad, but it certainly wasn't great. He was not under any consideration for even honorable mention in the three stars of the game. Uh, I thought Tara Viner was. I thought Jarvis was. I thought Burns was. I thought Brent Burns was excellent tonight. Uh, I gave Jacob Slavin one of the stars. Um, Jordan Martinuk was a consideration for a star. My stars, if you must, Slavin three, Taravon in two, and Spencer Martin one. But I thought Carolina had a lot of really good players tonight. Martin Natchez, obviously, could have easily gotten a star. As a matter of fact, I would say that through maybe two periods, he was my first star. And then the third period happened, and it kind of flipped everything around. Or maybe the end of the second period and the third period happened, and it kind of flipped everything around. But Natchez, man, has been dynamite. That, this Martin Natchez, I want this one to stay. This one, I kind of get the feeling, can make plays when it matters. This one. The trick is keeping this one and not exchanging it for the one who tries to be too fancy. Like, we need some of the dynamic stuff for Natchez. We need the fancy skating at times. We need the uh, the dangle. We need some of that. But sometimes it's the simple plays that really work the best. I will say, the only part of the night that I didn't love from Natchez ended up being the penalty that Carolina, that Orloff took late in the, in the third period. Because it was a, I've, Nate just tried to cast it to Orloff, but it put Dimitri in a difficult spot. Or even maybe he, he might have lost the puck in that way, but again, losing the puck. Where, where Nate just was, get, just cycle it back behind the net. Uh, but I think he was still trying to make the play. And Orloff couldn't get the puck. And then when, and I forget who went past him, but honestly, was it the, did it have to be called? No, they could have let it go. But did Orloff use the free hand? Yeah, he did. I thought. Uh, I know Rod Brindamore didn't like the call, and that's fair. Uh, at that time of the game, if your opinion is, yeah, there wasn't a ton there, so let that go in a 2-2 game. Ideally, I think that's the way you would like it. I didn't, again, I didn't think there was a ton there. But I think that's a penalty. It's not a big one. It's not a lot. But, yeah, it's callable. So they called it, and Carolina had to go about the business of killing it. And they did. So I um, ain't going to complain about it. But Carolina... The penalty kill was exceptional, and a lot of that is because the goaltender was exceptional tonight. Um, there's a lot. I mean, there was just so much going on. Um, very entertaining game. Excited. Part of me wishes that we were uh, that we could talk to Thomas George. Shouts to you, Thomas. Future, uh, future YouTube sensation. 
uh, current YouTube sensation. Um, all right. So uh, with with everything that happened tonight, big win. Here's what it does in the standings. Um, oh, by the way, I have one more thing I want to get to that I didn't want to forget. Carolina, with two points, jumps over the Flyers in the second place in the Metro. Still have two games in hand on Philadelphia. Four points behind the Rangers with a game in hand. So this was a big night. And I thought going into these two games, look, it's not make or break. There's still too many games left, and Carolina's in too good a position. You could get nothing out of these two games. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter that much. It doesn't stop you from making the playoffs. It doesn't even stop you from getting, I think, no worse than home ice advantage for the first round of the playoffs. But the goal is to catch the Rangers and win this division again. And it would have been more difficult to do that without a couple of good results. Now, the job is only half done. Keeping the Devils significantly behind you and Carolina now, having played one more game than New Jersey, is six points in front. If you can beat the Devils tomorrow, by the time you listen to this, it may be today. If you can beat the Devils Thursday, now you're eight points ahead with a game to end. Again, that doesn't close anything down anyway, because in a week, it could be even. But you want to keep the Devils uh, away from you. And, heck, the Devils right now, they have to fight, figure out a way maybe to get another goaltender and fight their way into the playoffs. The Devils are not a playoff team. They're not inside the playoff cut line. They don't know how good they are, but they are not a playoff team. Here's what the uh, the West looks like. Toronto won in overtime, so Toronto is up to 56 points, actually ahead of Tampa Bay now. So Tampa on 55 points is the first wild card. Detroit, 53 points, the second wild card. The Devils, with some games in hand on New Jersey and Tampa, two points back. The Islanders are also two points back now with Patrick Waugh. Washington, three points back. Uh, so right now, Pittsburgh is, what, five points out of a playoff spot. I didn't think Pittsburgh was a playoff team going into the season. Uh, I think they probably played some of their best hockey against Carolina this year. Uh, but the Hurricanes are better than the Penguins. Uh, by the way, did you see Pittsburgh score uh, into their own net on a delayed penalty? That was uh, that was wild. Uh, anyway, the Devils right now have to get some work done to be a playoff team. And they're going to have to play significantly better and more consistently than they've been. All right, so here's one more. The other thing I wanted to get to uh, before we say goodbye, and we are uh, just a few minutes away from wrapping this up. So the Hurricanes played their, uh, was it second game, third game, without third game? I don't remember remember now. Uh, Second game without Andrei Svechnikov. So here's Carolina's record now without Svechnikov, without Andre. They are eight, six, and three. They just won tonight, right? Eight wins, six six losses, three overtime losses without Andre in the lineup this season. With Andre, they are 18-9-2. So think about going into Boston without one of your best players who means so much because of the way he plays and what he does for you on the power play, in the corners, puck retrievals, all of that. And I'll put everything that happened tonight with a goalie, uh, with the with the uh, with the eclair out of the trash can, and you win in Boston. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool night to be a Carolina Hurricane. Pretty cool night to be a Carolina Hurricanes fan. And that is where we'll wrap it up. We'll do it again tomorrow night after the Canes and the Devil. Uh, we'll be at PNC Arena for that. I am Adam Gold. Uh, we're brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. 
no place like it. Sammy Hanna and his crew do a great job. And you should check them out for all of your exterior home improvement needs. Uh, for uh, siding, roofing, windows, entry doors, storm doors, whatever I just tried to say, cutter helmets, aluminumcompany.com. We'll do this again tomorrow after the Canes and the Devils. Until all of that, I mean, it was pretty cool, wasn't it? You know what? But DeBrus puts pressure out on Burns. He'll get the puck to Pasternak, and Pasternak is cleaned nicely by Saban. Textbook defense. Rebound comes out, though, as Pasternak gets to it. Save made by Martin. Now the Canes will spring Martin in on Olmark. He scores! Jordan Martin puts it through Olmark. And with 2.27 left, Carolina's got a 3-2 lead in Boston. Good night.